What's up guys, welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Auto. And today we're working on the Oldsmobile again. We're gonna change this AC line. This is the high side line. We're gonna be going through the process of changing it out and vacuum and recharging the system. Okay, so to start things off, we're gonna disconnect the battery. You wanna disconnect the negative cable first, then the positive. So with the battery disconnected, we're gonna take off that bolt which is for the bracket holding down the battery. So with the battery removed, you can take this coolant reservoir off. You just unscrew the top. And then pull it out. And just set it off to the side. So this right here is the high pressure line that we're removing. And all you got to do is undo that nut right there and then undo it on this side right there. So, so we're going to spray down some WD-40 on there. Okay, so using the 7 8 and the 15 16 you can loosen up the fittings. Once you have the other side broken free, Go ahead and break this one loose. And get the rest of it out by hand. Once you got the nut off, just squeeze it back. Pull them apart. And then just pull it off of the other side too. The AC on this car system is designed for R12 originally. But that's not available anymore. We've moved on to R134. So in order to refill this, we have to use one of these fittings. And this is for a retrofit. That way we can use the R134 gauges and R134 gas on the R12 line. So once you got the valve back on there, we're gonna change these O-rings. So every time you get a line off and wanna replace it, you might as well replace these O-rings because I don't know if you could tell in this one, these are pretty beat up. If you were to put the o-rings on back like this, this is pretty much just guaranteeing that you're going to get a leak right there. And it's not worth your time, so it's just better to replace them now so you don't have a leak later. Once you got the new o-rings on there, you want to make sure to put some refrigerant oil on the o-rings. Because if you put them in dry, they'll pretty much rip right there and you're also just going to create a leak. With the o-rings ready to go, go ahead and put the line back in. And just try to set it up nice and straight. That way all you got to do is just push in to put the line. Once you got it all on, just get it hand tight so you have some wiggling room before you tighten it up. You want to make sure they're fully seated together before you start putting the nut back on. Now that you got both sides on there, make sure this discharge port is where you want it to be and tighten it up. Now that we got the line on, we attached our gauges, the low side port over there and the high, the high side port goes down through here onto the line we just attached and the middle line, the yellow, goes to our vacuum pump. And we're going to vacuum out the system. This should come down to almost 30 inches of mercury. Once it's down to 30 inches of mercury, you let it run and then stop it and it should hold the vacuum for about 20 minutes. If it starts going down, that indicates that you have a leak somewhere and you have to start checking for leaks. So here I have the vacuum pump running and you can see that the gauge is going down. I opened up the low and the high side so it's sucking from both sides. And this side's gonna go down to about 30, almost 30. And then it just has to keep running for about an hour. So it's been about maybe 30 seconds and now it's at 30. Let me turn it off real quick. 
So right here we're checking for any really, really big leaks. And if there were to have been some, it would immediately start dropping back to zero. But in this case, there isn't any, so we're gonna continue vacuuming for about an hour. The reason why you wanna check as soon as this thing goes down to 30 is because you don't wanna spend an hour vacuuming and then stop it and immediately see that you have a leak. So that's why right now we just hit almost 30, about 28. So once we hit that, just turn it off, checked it, there's no immediate leaks, and now we can continue. While this thing is vacuuming, I just wanted to mention one thing that I had forgotten to say, and that's that with this system, it already had no refrigerant in it. It had leaked it all out. But if you're trying to do this for yourself on your own car, and the AC's working because it has the refrigerant, you can't just release it into the atmosphere because that is illegal. You would need to go to a shop to recover the refrigerant for you and then continue on with the steps. So just keep that in mind. Do not let any refrigerant out of your system if it's in there. So we've been vacuuming it for half an hour and we're gonna go ahead and stop it. So close the valves. And turn it off. With everything off, now you just check that this needle doesn't go down. Maybe in 15, 20 minutes, it shouldn't go down. So it's been half hour and the gauge hasn't dropped at all. So now we're gonna go ahead and put everything back together and so we can start filling it with the refrigerant. Now we're gonna install the coolant reservoir and the battery. Don't forget about installing the bracket. With the bracket secure, you can go ahead and put the positive side of the battery first and then the negative. So this is the valve, the gauges go right here. So the yellow hose is gonna hook up right here. This side goes on the can. What you wanna do is make sure that this is all the way open first so the needle is inside. Once you screw it in, all the way onto the can. Then you're gonna close the valve and you see the needle's gonna come out and slowly punctures the can. Once you got the valve all the way in, it's punctured the can and the valve is closed. There's no way for the refrigerant to come out. So then you're gonna start opening it to let the refrigerant out. And then before you put it away, you wanna make sure that it's closed down all the way and the valve is closed. So this is the refrigerant we're gonna use. It's the R134A. We have this uh, adapter for the hose and it's hooked up to the yellow hose on our gauges. When we open this up, we're gonna let the gas go through and then we have to open it up here so refrigerant comes out of here so there's no air in the lines so we don't get air into the AC system. So now we're gonna open this, the valve up and that's gonna allow the refrigerant to get into the line. Also make sure you're wearing gloves because if any of this refrigerant sprays out and you get it on your hands, you could get frostbite because it cools everything down really, really fast. Anyway, so here's this refrigerant in the, in the lines and wear safety glasses for sure. You let it out until you see the refrigerant right there. Now you know that there's only refrigerant in your line and you can start feeding it into the system. Here's our gauges. You just keep opening it until it stops taking it in. Like right now you can hear it hissing and it's sucking in the refrigerant. So I can't hear it hissing anymore. So that means that it stopped taking in the refrigerant. So close your valves. And you can see we've got about 30 PSI on there. So now you wanna start the, the car with the air conditioning on full blast. And so the compressor starts and starts sucking in more refrigerant. Before you start it, just make sure that your hoses aren't in the way of the fan or the belt because you don't want that hitting anything. It'll rip the hoses off or you know, you'll just run into problems. So just make sure everything's good to go before starting the car. So fill it up. You want to open up the low side and move the can back and forth. You can see right there when the, when the refrigerant goes through and you'll, you'll see the pressure going up and the can gets cold. Once you get to about 50 PSI, the compressor is gonna start short cycling. That means it's trying to turn on, but 
it doesn't have enough refrigerant and you got to keep adding refrigerant on there until the compressor stays at a constant PSI. You'll be able to see right there the compressor is short cycling. So you want to keep moving the can back and forth. You'll see the refrigerant going in. in. You want to keep doing that until this can doesn't feel cold anymore. And then, because as you're putting it in, your can is losing pressure and it's cold. So you keep going back and forth. But once there's no more refrigerant in there, it starts getting warm. And you can also feel how heavy it is. So once it's empty, you want to close the valve and close the valve over here and then swap it into a new can. And then you're going to repeat the bleeding process right here on the, at, the, at the line right here. You're going to repeat the bleeding process so you don't put any unwanted moisture into the system. So we're going to add this oil because whenever you lose all the refrigerant, you lose some oil. So I'm opening up the can. Once you've bottomed it out, now you open it and you open up over here on the valve. Once you get to the point that the compressor is staying on longer, you want to close the valve every once in a while to see how much it's actually going because when you open when you open the valve right here it goes up because you're putting in refrigerant and then so you're gonna hold you're gonna close it again and that's gonna be the pressure that that it's actually reading so right now we're about 30 psi right here now with the pressures they're gonna be higher on this because this is a retrofit and the pressures aren't exactly the same like this system was designed for R12 so the pressures aren't going to be exactly what they're supposed to be. Um, we're just trying to get this to work. Uh, that's why it's a retrofit. But normally, if you're working on an R134 system, your low side should rest somewhere around 35 PSI. And your high side is going to be generally whatever ambient temperature is plus 100 PSI. So if it's 80 degrees, it should be at around 180 plus or minus 20. So it could be anywhere from 200 down to 160 would be normal if we're at 80 degrees. Again, this is on a 134 system. This is a retrofit, so the pressures aren't going to line up exactly the same. To get it perfect, you would need to swap out the condenser and various other parts to make it work. But again, this is just trying to get it to cool. So we're just going to make, make it work like this. Another way that you could check that you have the right pressures in your air conditioning system is, is that when you hook up the gauges with the car off, both pressures should be reading the same and they should both be reading around ambient temperature. So right now we're at about 70 degrees and you can see it's a little over, it's probably like 75 degrees, 75 PSI on here and about the same on here. So that there would indicate that we have a proper charge. So here inside the car, I have a thermometer and you stick this right here on that vent and then turn on the air conditioning and see what the temperature is coming out of the vents. With the thermometer, you wanna ideally have it around 40 degrees, which is why that's green right there at 40 degrees. And that's because if your low side temperature is around 32, it usually loses around 10 degrees from the evaporator all the way up into the vents. So if it's 32, then the absolute minimum you'll see up here is 42 and at 32 that's already freezing so it usually keeps it around 33 34 degrees so you'd probably end up seeing here around 43 or 44 degrees maybe 45 would be ideal on a perfect air conditioning system that's functioning properly um, again with this since it is a retrofit having it absolutely perfect is just not going to happen because this system was not designed for r134 so you'd probably see around 50 degrees, maybe 55. And in our case right now, with the car running and the air conditioning, we're seeing 60. So even there, that is a little too high. Um, so right there, we do have a proper charge, but it's still not cooling as well as it should be. So you could go around and clean the condenser and that'll probably help drop those extra five degrees and bring it down to around 55. Now that we got the AC taken care of, we got to remove the valves from the high side port and the low side. And we already verified that there's no leaks in the system, but that doesn't include this connection right here. To make sure that there's no leaks right here in this connection, you take this off and then 
apply some soap and water. You want to put the water and add the dish soap to it, but don't mix it because if there's any leaks in here, they'll show up as bubbles. So you don't want to make the soap and water mixture all bubbles and then throw bubbles on there. It just makes it easier if you don't mix it and you just throw it on there. Now we're taking off the low side. Now you also want to listen. If you can hear a hiss, that's an obvious sign of a leak. You can also put your finger on it and plug it. And then if you can feel it pushing your finger out, again, that's an obvious sign of a leak. In this case, I don't have either one. So now we're going to put a little bit of water right there. So there you go. You can see right there, there's no leaks. So this side too doesn't have any bubbles. Once you're done, don't forget to put the caps back on. Okay guys, so there you go. We got the air conditioning running back on this car and we got that line replaced and there's no more leaks. Um, just, there is a word of warning though because every vehicle is different and air conditioning service should really be done by somebody who at least has some mechanical knowledge because every single vehicle is different. Every situation is different. Like in this case, we got it down to 60 degrees and we could get it down a little bit lower by cleaning the condenser um, but that'll have to be a thing for another day also you could clean the evaporator and that'll also help out it also depends on your fans the air conditioning fans how well they're working if you're idling and you're working on a on a vehicle with a mechanical clutch then you're worrying about the fan clutch and there's just so many variables that you really need to know what you're doing when you're working on an air conditioning system um, but this video was hopefully just as a general guide. Um, these are the basic steps that you would normally do on a vehicle. And uh, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you next week. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and all those other goodies. Thank you.